Hey guys, my name is Amanda. Welcome to my channel. If you're new to my channel and haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so. Also, if you give me a big thumbs up, it really helps me out here on YouTube and lets YouTube know you like the content I create. Today's DIYs are going to be 15 of my best summer DIYs for 2023. And we are going to start off with some nautical DIYs. So for this first Dollar Tree nautical DIY, it is easy and fun to do. It's a perfect DIY to do while watching a movie or listening to a podcast. Here's what it looks like. Very customizable. Dollar Tree has tons of different twines you could use, but I am just going to use some Bonnie craft cord from Hobby Lobby in two different colors and this mermaid tail wreath form from the Dollar Tree. Again, you can get this Bonnie cord at Hobby Lobby, $4.99 for a huge roll, and that's not on sale. So if it was on sale, it would be even cheaper. So I just cut a strand and I began wrapping this wreath form, just gluing it down and wrapping all the way around. Now, if you're using multiple colors like me, you can totally choose the pattern that you want to do, whatever you think looks best. I know Hobby Lobby even has a blue um a bonnie cord that you could use but dollar tree has multicolored twines in their nautical section as well so i just wrap 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 i'm going to wrap the whole outline of this um wreath form here in this darker color this wreath form is so fun. You could do all kinds of different things with it. Dollar Tree also has some nautical craft fabric in the nautical section, and that would look really pretty like behind um, the wreath form. You could glue it down and that would look super nice. You could use some seashells to embellish. So really the sky is the limit, whatever you think, but I just did this and it really didn't take me as long as it looks like it would. I just did the top half in this darker color and then I'm I'm just going to do the tail in the lighter color and then to embellish it again you could use seashells you could use anything you like i just found some cute little picks at Dollar Tree along with this nautical line and mine had cute little seahorses on them. So pretty. They do have several different varieties of picks to choose from but I just cut my picks apart and then just placed the pieces down kind of in a swag formation however I wanted them and so I liked how they looked but again customize this however you want. This is just such a cute and easy decoration for a wall or a door. I am going to put it in our downstairs bathroom after we remodel it, but I just think that this is so cute, so easy to do, and again, a perfect craft to do while watching a movie, listening to a podcast, just relaxing. I love crafts that you can just kind of do um, while multitasking. As a mom of six, I multitask quite a bit, so perfect craft for me. Here is what it looks like. Again, so pretty, so custom customizable, very inexpensive on a budget, and yeah, perfect, beautiful coastal decor. Now moving into this next Dollar Tree DIY. It's quick and easy and quite a large, a beautiful statement piece for a vignette or a wall. So we're going to begin with three words from Dollar Tree, some Dollar Tree rope of whatever color that you should choose. I held up this cream colored rope, but I do end up using a darker colored rope. Dollar Tree has lots of choices. I have three of these large relax signs from Dollar Tree, but you could really use any of the large signs you're just going to be placing them together and using some popsicle sticks or whatever scrap wood you might have to adhere these into one large piece. Then you're going to want to flip it over and the back will be your front. I chose a couple of colors by Waverly and I'm going to paint the bottom and the top plank with my Waverly plaster. I am then going to use this other color of Waverly there in the middle and I'm not making my lines super neat. I kind of want them to blur a little bit. I kind of want a nice kind of relaxed feel to this. I don't want it super crisp. If you did, you could totally use some painter's tape, which you could also find at Dollar Tree to get clean lines, but I'm actually going to be brushing that blue color on the plaster and then brushing the plaster on the blue. I just like how that looks. Then I'm going to lay out my three words, one on each plank, and I'm going to use hot glue to glue them down, but if you want to use super glue or E6000, whatever you choose, but this actually held really well for me. 
So it's going to say breathe, beach, relax. And then I'm just going to glue down this darker rope that I chose. And I'm going to wrap it twice on either side just for some added embellishments. Now Dollar Tree does have some starfish, some shells, some beautiful embellishments that you could glue to here if you chose to. I just chose to keep mine fairly simple and use the robe as embellishment but really the sky is the limit you could even glue some of those cute little anchors to this sign whatever you like Jumping into some patriotic DIYs, for this first one I'm going to share how I made this red, white, and blue berry wreath with Dollar Tree supplies Again with the Dollar Tree foam wreath form and eight of these five piece berry picks from Dollar Tree. Also a Dollar Tree roll of burlap. I glued the end of the burlap down on top of my foam wreath and then I wrapped this entire wreath with the burlap. Once I was done, I trimmed off the excess and glued my end down. Now I did play around with this for a little while to find the best way to get these berry picks to go through the burlap and also through the foam. So I kind of tried just poking the end of the pick down and then I realized that the ends were so long that I could double them over and then make a hole right through the burlap and the foam with my scissor and stick the stem down in that hole. Then I found that I could even add a little dab of hot glue if necessary on top of that hole just to get a good hold. And these do have some type of wire inside of the stems so you can twist and bend them as necessary to get them to go the direction in which you want. So I just kind of alternated my colors and I have them all going in the same direction for a neat and organized look. This is such an easy wreath. And I think it's so beautiful. It only cost us around $10 as we used eight berry picks. I feel like you could probably get away with using seven though. And then that some wreath form and the roll of burlap, although you could use any ribbon or fabric that you have in your stash. I then took a small strip of burlap that I had left over, folded it over to form a loop, glued my loop down on the back of my wreath form, and that way I have a cute matching hanger. Then I just finished up my wreath by adding as many berries as I wanted, and here is what it looks like. Absolutely gorgeous. I am usually a bow person, but this wreath is so pretty. I don't even feel like it needs a bow and it just has the perfect look to it I think. Okay moving into our next DIY which is very simple but very adorable. You will need three of these crates from Dollar Tree. You can get some with slats or some that do not have slats. I have plaster, ocean, and Marlow chalk paints. Actually I'm sorry that is a lacquer chalk paint. I'm going to paint one in each color here you see. So I have my red white and blue representatives and then I'm just going to take the red and blue and I'm going to glue them together with hot glue end to end. Then I am going to put some hot glue where they meet and also on either side of where they meet and I am just going to stack my plaster box which represents my white right on top and press it down firmly until it is dry. Then I'm going to go ahead and lightly dry brush over the whole thing with my plaster chalk paint and a little stencil brush from Dollar Tree. So here we're just about three 75 I don't usually count the cost of paint but this project is going to be under five dollars as well I have these stars from Hobby Lobby they were about three dollars for the package but I'm not using the whole package and they were 40% off and also I'm showing you a Dollar Tree option that you could use those little foam stars now I'm just going to take six of these stars and I believe there was about 12 or 13 in there so just about a dollar's worth of those stars I'm guessing and I'm going to take a long skewer stick from Dollar Tree that comes several to a pack and just cut it down and stick it into my stars then I'm just taking a little piece of foam I had on my stash cutting it up and putting it into my crates I will then stick my stars that are on sticks into that foam and just use some greenery that I had in my stash to fill it up so about a dollar's worth of greenery about a dollar's worth of stars and then your three crates I'm just estimating here but 
very close to five dollars and again you could use those dollar tree foam stars if you wanted and use any greenery you had in your stash to create this on a budget okay now it's time for some lemon diys and for this first one we are going to jump in with our quick and affordable theme that we have going in this video so i have this jar from the dollar tree i'm going to flip it over and paint it with waverly plaster chalk paint i'm also going to remove the embellishments on the other side so it lays nicely I went ahead and I took some yellow paint and any yellow paint will do Waverly has a maize chalk paint I was out of so this is just a yellow by folk art I believe but I took a Dollar Tree sponge dabber and I just placed some paint on my dabber and then just kind of twisted in circular motion until I like the size of my dots so here's what this looks like and I did do some hanging off the side so it would be more whimsical I had a piece of buffalo check burlap that I got on clearance at Hobby Lobby but you you could use anything you like. I glued that to the middle of my jar. I have this lemon slice from Dollar General for a dollar and I'm going to glue it at an angle right on top of that buffalo check fabric. It has a cute little hello tag dangling off of it so I glued that down. Next I just took a little sharpie marker and I did some little swirls with dots between them on each one of my little yellow polka dots. And then I just took a beat piece of jute twine and put two little beads on either end. I then glued that down to the top of my little jar here and now I'm just going to take a piece of twine and wrap it around the mouth of the jar a few times for embellishment. Here's what this looks like. I think it is so cute. I think it all blends together really nicely. You can hang this up. You can set it on a vignette. So many different possibilities but again you could do the same concept with watermelon or if you can find an orange slice and I'm actually showing you what this looks like with some more of my lemon decor that I have done in a recent video which I can link below if you want some more lemon DIY inspiration. I really love lemon DIYs for summer and have a large corner of my kitchen decorated with lemon DIYs. So here is another one I'm going to show you. I began with this round sign from Dollar Tree made of press board and I found it in the nautical section and I'm going to be painting it with Waverly plaster chalk paint and then going over the whole thing generously with an Elmer's glue stick. I'm then going to take a napkin that I got in a pack from Dollar Tree and I'm going to remove the back ply. Now if you want to use Mod Podge instead of a glue stick you be my guest but for me it wrinkles up too much and I really have have trouble however you can put a layer of Mod Podge on top if you want but for the first layer to get it adhered I like to use glue stick I am then going to use a piece of sandpaper to go around the edges and now I'm creating my bow last year at Sam's Club I got this huge roll of beautiful lemon ribbon so I'm just going to make my classic little bow I call it an expo but sometimes I add in an extra loop so for this one we're just doing three loops on either side just folding it over cutting off the excess and then we just pinch in the middle and then you can tie it with twine you can tie it with a zip tie or a pipe cleaner whatever works for you and whatever you have on hand just make sure to tie it tightly because the tie tighter that you tie your bow the more you can fluff it and the more you fluff it the better it looks and so here's that's what I'm doing here just pulling it apart and fluffing it out and then it will be ready to attach to my sign and now I'm just going to use hot glue to attach it and so here's me doing that just a little dab of hot glue pressing it down in the middle until it adheres and there we go now I did decide to add some tails so I just cut two lengths of ribbon glued them under the fold to either side and then I dovetail them by just folding them in half and cutting a triangle upward now I'm going to add some eucalyptus on either side of my bow just for a pop of green and a pop of color I think it looks really pretty with my ribbon now I made a smaller bow with some buffalo check ribbon and just press that right in the middle of my larger bow holding it down until it is firmly adhered 
word. Now, I had this hello word. I believe it came from Dollar Tree, but you can get wooden words at almost every craft store. And I really liked the color that it was. I did not paint it. Of course, you could totally customize it. Now, I'm going to add a little jute twine hanger to the back of my sign, and then I'm going to cover it with a piece of brown craft paper from Dollar Tree. So here is what it looks like. I think it is so beautiful. It is so vibrant. I did not go over the finished product with Mod Podge as I'm not planning on putting it in an area where it's going to get dirty or wet. But if you are, then I definitely recommend sealing it. Also, if you do craft shows or anything like that, this would be the perfect craft to mass produce because I believe you get 8 to 12. I can't remember the exact number, but it is quite a good amount. And then just getting your base and your decor would not be expensive at all and would be a great craft to share. And now moving right along on my channel, I have used Dollar Tree pizza pans many times. I have made door hangers and wreaths in various different styles. I even made a Lazy Susan, which we call a Miss Susan in my house. I have even made a double-sided sign for Easter using a pizza pan. So today I decided to make a tray using a pizza pan. Here's what it looks like. I wanted it to be for summer and I think it is so pretty. So I'm going to go ahead and spray paint my pizza pan with this Rust-Oleum vintage blue it's such a gorgeous color and then i'm going to take a wood round you can purchase this at dollar tree or hobby lobby if you buy a value pack at hobby lobby it's about the same price breakdown as dollar tree and i also have these three wooden cubes from dollar tree this beautiful lemon fabric is from Dollar Tree as well. So I'm just going to apply a generous coat of Mod Podge to one side of my wood round. And then I'm going to flip it right on top of my fabric. And I am going to just trim around that circle. Now you could trace it out and then trim it, but this works for me. And once that is done, I'll Mod Podge over the top as well. I'm going to hot glue it to my pizza pan. And I will Mod Podge around the remaining showing part of the pizza pan so none of my paint scratches off. Now I'm going to paint my wood blocks with Waverly Maze chalk paint. Once they are painted I am going to adhere them to the bottom of my pizza pan with hot glue but you could totally use a super glue or an E6000 if you rather and then I'm just going to take that same Waverly Maze chalk paint and go around the rim of my pizza pan which is now my adorable little tray. Here is what it looks like. It's so cute to display various different items, but it's actually displaying our next DIY right now, and I think it just looks so pretty for summer. This next DIY is a quick and easy set, but I think they are so pretty, and they only cost about $1.75 each. I have these two golden candle holders from Dollar Tree. They are different heights. One is taller, and these two plastic bowls from the party section that are two for $1.25. I'm going to paint my candle holders with Waverly Plaster chalk paint and my plastic bowls with this same spray paint I used previously, this vintage blue. It's so pretty, and it goes on so well. I just added about two coats. And then I use hot glue to glue my candlesticks to the bottom of my bowls. And here's what this looks like. Of course, the color is customizable. And you could go over those white candlesticks with some antique wax by Waverly. And that would give it a wooden appearance, which would be really pretty as well. You could cover, color the bowls any way you liked. I just love this summery DIY. Let's do some BDIYs. This first one is a quick and easy one that I had so much fun making. Brenda has used Scrabble pieces in several of her projects, so gave me the idea to do that. So I have this little embroidery hoop from Dollar Tree. I prepared it by removing the screw. I have this fabric from Dollar Tree with these cute little beehives and florals. So I'm just gonna take a small piece of that fabric and I'm just gonna place it inside of the embroidery hoop. I was fussing around a little bit here because I've never used an embroidery hoop before but it really wasn't that difficult you just place the outer ring around the inner ring and then put that screw back in the top and tighten it once that was done I flipped it over and just trimmed off the excess of fabric and then I had a cute little embroidery hoop that I could go ahead and decorate so I took out the scrabble pieces now I did need to use one z 
from an extra pack as I only had one Z in each pack but I took out the letters for a buzz and I just placed them how I wanted them then I glued them down I put a couple pieces of greenery eucalyptus to be exact on either side at the top of this little embroidery hoop then I just used this little trim ribbon from Dollar Tree to create a little bow I just made a little loop on either side and then a tail and then just put some ribbon in the middle so here's what that looks like I glued it down just below that screw for the embroidery hoop and here's what it looks like so cute so easy it would be perfect for a large tiered tray or just any little spot that you wanted to add a little bit of a bee decor I think it is really cute again I think I already said that but you guys give me a little bit of grace it is one o'clock in the morning here so Anyway, moving right along and into one of my very favorite bee DIYs I've ever done here on my channel. It is this gorgeous beehive and sign. So I began with one of these little baskets from Dollar Tree. They're for a barbecue and I believe they come about three to a pack. I purchased this jute twine from Hobby Lobby as I found it cheaper. It was $3.99 for this huge roll. But Dollar Tree's rope is about the same size for a dollar. Um, it just depends on the quantity that you want, but I find this to be a better deal. I took this basket and cut off the bottom part. I left about three quarters at the top and just cut off the bottom. So really how big you want your beehive to be, you just cut off the excess. I then started taking my rope or twine and forming a circle in my fingers by using tiny dabs of hot glue and just rolling it around like a cinnamon roll. Once I get a fairly large roll, I am then going to hot glue that to the top of this basket like so. I'm then going to go around about one or two more times to just make sure that this covers the very top of our basket. And once that is done, I will glue it down and cut that excess. At this point, I'm going to begin putting strands on one by one. So I'm going to take an end, glue it down to the side of my basket, go all the way around to the other side and glue that down. I'm going to do this almost all the way down my basket, but when I get toward the bottom, I'm actually going to go around the whole basket a few times, and that way I have some rope on the back to be a base to attach my sign to for stability. So I didn't want to go all the way around this whole thing and waste a bunch of my rope, um, so I just did a few loops, about four I believe, um, around the back, and that way I have a nice base to glue onto. And then I I just finish this off with single strands like you see me doing here. Once I get to the bottom, I'll then take a pair of sharp scissors and trim off any excess um, of this basket that is hanging off of the end. It may be a little sharp, that is why I kind of sanded off my basket end, but just be careful of your fingers. And once you do this, your basket should be able to stand up with your sign. So now now I'm going to go ahead and take my Waverly ink chalk paint and a small brush and I'm going to create a circle on the front of my beehive. Once I get my circle outline done, I'll just go ahead and fill it in with a generous amount of this Waverly ink chalk paint. Once that is dry, I will take a small piece of this rope or twine and I will outline that circle for the entrance to our beehive. I'll just use hot glue to glue that down. Now now once I get my beehive attached to my sign, I will be going around the whole hive with a strand of rope just to kind of clean it up. But I purchased these bees at Hobby Lobby. They were very inexpensive. They're actually buttons, but they work perfect for this craft. I'm just going to glue a couple down on my beehive. Now I'm taking the sign from Dollar Tree left over from Christmas and I'm painting the back with my Waverly Plaster Chalk Paint to give it a base. Hobby Lobby has their scrapbooking items 50% off lots of the time. This scrapbooking kit was $5.99, 50% off. It was such an amazing deal. So I went ahead and painted the top part of my tag with Waverly Maze right over that plaster chalk paint. I then took a piece of scrapbook paper that I liked and cut it to size for the bottom part of this tag. I cut a small 
circle out of the middle of this paper and that way the rope on the back of my beehive can attach directly to the tag and not just to the paper. I smoothed the paper down using just a regular glue stick like a school glue stick and then I took my sander and sanded off the edges of the scrapbook paper. I then glued my beehive and my tag sign making sure that the rope was right over that spot where there is no scrapbook paper just so that it attaches nicely. I then took an extra length of this rope and went around my beehive to clean it up and give it a nice clean look. I then took this beautiful bee ribbon that I actually purchased at Sam's Club. It was about $5 for a huge roll. The Dollar Tree did have some bee themed ribbon last year if you were lucky enough to find that. I had a couple subscribers express interest in seeing some bows done in slow motion um, so you can get a really good look at it. So here's another bow that I like to do. This is for this sign, but I'm just taking kind of folding them over separately gathering them together with an extra piece of ribbon at the bottom for tails. I gather in the middle tightly with a piece of twine and then I usually take that twine and loop it around the back and tie tightly again. The tighter you cinch your bow in the middle, the more you can really fluff it up. So I'm just kind of showing you this in slow motion and if you need to go back and look at it again, you can definitely do that, but I just trim off any excess on the back um, that there may be from when I folded those loops over. Then once that is done, I can go ahead and put my fingers inside the loops of my bow and give it a good fluffing. This is wired ribbon and I do prefer wired ribbon for my bows as it fluffs up nice and pretty. Then I like to take my bow tails and I like to fold it over and then holding it at the bottom or toward the bottom I take my scissor and cut a triangle upward and that gives you a beautiful dovetail boutique finish. I like to do this to both of my tails and then here you have this adorable little bow. So I'm going to take this particular bow and attach it to my tag sign and I did replace the original twine that was at the top so this can hang or it can free stand. Now I'm going to take some cute little loop eucalyptus oh my goodness <laughs> that I had in my stash and I'm going to put some on either side I use two sprigs on either side and some hot glue and just tuck it right underneath those bow loops and I just think that this makes this look so pretty and then I'm going to take another one of those little bees and glue it in the middle so here is the font that I used for my phrase Use this font for the words home is where your bee and then for honey I just went into where you can search images and I typed the word honey and it came up with this. So all together it's home is where your honey bee. I thought this was really adorable. I am just going to adhere this to my tag sign and here is what it looks like. Of course Dollar Tree does have letter stickers and ribbon transfers if you do not have a Cricut or you could freehand however you like but but I just think that this came out so adorable for a wall or a front door or even a vignette as you can hang or stand this sign. Moving into some bonus summer DIYs, let me share with you this gorgeous flower made from a cookie sheets from Dollar Tree. You will need four to five sets of these cookie sheets, just depending on whether or not you're willing to kind of use the edge of that cookie sheet. They do come in a two pack. So here I have a bunny wreath form from Dollar Tree and I am using it to trace the ears to get my petals. I'm just using a pen to trace ears like so. And you see how the edge of the cookie sheet is not ribbed like the inside. That's what I meant if you're willing to use the edge. Of course, not the outer edge, the inside edge, if that makes sense, hopefully. But here's what it looks like with three petals on it. And of course, I'm doing two at a time, so it's actually six. And then on my next set of cookie sheets, I did another petal. And I also did the smallest round circle on the middle of that wreath form. And of course, I did two cookie sheets, so I got two of those. Now I have eight petals and I have two circles. So I'm going to arrange my eight petals out on top of the bottom circle. Now I later decided to come in and add another layer of eight petals, but you could add it at this point. Once I got my petals arranged, I just used hot glue to adhere them down. You'll want to be very careful as this metal does heat up, but the hot glue does hold it fairly well. I use these colors of Rust-Oleum spray paint. 
I spray painted my flower with the blue and then I spray painted my extra circle with a yellow. Once it was dry, I glued the yellow circle on top of my flower and you can stop at just this if you like it, but I did flip it over and add another eight petals. I just added them where it was sparse because I wanted my flower to be fuller. So you can add as few or as many petals as you like. You could even add some smaller petals for more dimension. Of course, you can change up the colors but this is what I made and I think it's adorable I want to make a few more so that I have a set and it's very budget friendly and easy to do this next DIY is also quick and easy but it is a Dollar Tree DIY using a sign from Dollar Tree from fall time but you can find signs like this almost every season and then this little welcome sign had these three popsicles dangling off of it I just removed them so now I'm going to paint my long sign with some Waverly plaster chalk paint and then I'm going to take two sets of the popsicles I had two of those welcome signs with the popsicles for a total of six and I'm just arranging my popsicles in a pattern that I like just getting them exactly how I want them and hot gluing them down. Now I'm using some poster board stickers from Dollar Tree to spell out summer. I didn't have any M's left so I'm actually using two W's upside down but this worked. I just tried to get them as straight as possible. Maybe not perfect but I did my best. This is such a quick and easy craft but I think it adds a really fun pop of color for summer. Then I just went around either side of the sign with some jute twine to give it a little pizzazz and of course I'll be covering the back of my sign with some brown packing paper that I find at Dollar Tree just to give this a finished look. So quick is so easy. I really hope that you enjoy this. You can customize it by changing the background color of the sign or maybe even adding some little faux sprinkles to the sign. Whatever you think looks nice but again such a fun thing to make for summer under a covered patio or for your wall or you can even prop it up. Okay let's jump into the next DIY. This is going to be one of two fun wreaths I'm sharing with you today. You're going to need a wreath form from the Dollar Tree. And then I actually found these paracord from Dollar Tree in a few different colors. These were my favorite colors and I was so excited to find this. I actually use one of each color and then just a little piece of a second one of each color. I find this sign at Dollar Tree. You can turn the little um, sign part inside of it to where it says relax or enjoy. Joy. and then of course some florals from Dollar Tree. So I'm going to start by just winding my cord around this wreath form, gluing it down and winding. Now there are six sections to this wreath form so I am going to use each of my three colors to do two sections like so. So I'm just showing you how much is left when you finish one spool and you'll need just a little bit more of a second spool. So again I did have two of each color and this is what it looks like so far then I just fill in that third color and here's what we have for our wreath base now I'm going to go ahead and cut the jute cord from the top of my sign and using hot glue I'm going to attach my sign to the wreath form just positioning how I want it and making sure that that cute little thing in the middle can still turn then just placing it down and holding it firmly until it is dry and then you can go ahead and decorate your wreath form I am going to be adding a cute little bow. I'm just using some buffalo check ribbon and I'm just creating a bow by looping it over three times on either side and then pinching it in the middle and tying it tightly. You can use jute twine, a pipe cleaner, a zip tie, whatever is easiest for you. I usually just use some jute twine and I just wrap it around a couple times, tie it tightly cut off the excess and then you can fluff your bow out. I like to use wired ribbon because it fluffs better. Now I had this pretty ribbon that I'm going to be using as well. I honestly can't remember where I got it from. I think I may have gotten it from a yard sale but Dollar Tree has tons of beautiful patterned ribbon or Hobby Lobby, Michaels, pretty much any craft store. I added a two loop bow on top of my three loop bow and then just fluffed everything together making sure that it looks nice nice and just kind of getting it all in position then you're ready to attach it to your wreath form I just figured out where I wanted it to be 
added a bunch of hot glue to that area and then pushed my bow down firmly. Now I have my three different colors of flowers from Dollar Tree. I just pulled all my flowers off of their stems and then be begin positioning them on this wreath form. I put one flower on my little bow and then I put three to one side and two to another side. I just think that this is so fun. I absolutely love all of these bright colors and I hope that you like it too. This is perfect if you have like a pool area you could hang it by or under a covered a porch or just in a really fun sun room sun room I'm sorry I can't talk today but I just love this and think it is perfect for summer I absolutely love bright and fun colorful items for summer this next DIY will go by so quickly. Don't blink, you might miss it, but it is also really fun for a party or something like that. Another Dollar Tree DIY using some Dollar Tree banners. Well, one Dollar Tree banner, but you could use as many as you wanted. This comes in the crafter's square section and has six panels to it. Next, I got these plates from the Dollar Tree. I got oranges, lemons, and watermelons, and they come 12 to a pack. I'm going to take one plate of each and I'm just going to cut a triangular shape off of the end there and then I'm going to trim the other more rounded sign so that this actually looks triangular or kind of like a piece of pizza and I'm going to use my first piece as a template for my second piece because I'm going to get two pieces out of each plate. Since we have three fruits and six banner pieces we need six pieces of fruit so I'll just have two of each and I'm going to be alternating them on top of this banner. I'm going to be using hot glue to attach them and just press them flat. Make sure that they lay nicely. So I chose to go orange, watermelon, and then lemon, but you could do this in any order which you think is nice or which you like. And here's what this looks like. Literally a five minute DIY that holds a big punch, I think. It is quite large. It is quite quite colorful and perfect for summer. Okay, jumping into our next Dollar Tree DIY, which is also a super fun and easy one that is perfect for a porch or your front door. You'll need a wreath form from Dollar Tree, any type of ribbon, and this four piece coaster is set from Dollar Tree. You'll need two or three of them, but here's what they look like. And now I'm going to wrap my wreath form with my ribbon that I had on hand. Again, any ribbon will do. I was a tiny bit short, but that's okay. That's just where I'll place my bow. I have this gorgeous pineapple ribbon that I believe I purchased at Hobby Lobby. But again, Dollar Tree has tons of ribbon. You can use any you like to create a bow. I just loop it over until I have three loops on either side. Then I cut that off. I pinch it tightly in the middle and tie it. So the tighter that you tie and pinch it in the middle, the more you can fluff your bow out and the more you fluff it, the better it looks. I then cut a large piece of ribbon to be my tails and I added that in before I tied this together. Once that is done, I am going to trim off the excess of jute twine and I'll be dovetailing my tails by folding them over and cutting a triangle upward. I attached my bow so that it would cover that empty space on my wreath form and the reason I'm adding my bow first is so that I will know how to properly place my little sandal coasters. So here I am doing the little dovetail that I said I was going to do and then I'm just going to take all of my coasters. I actually use two and a half packages um, but you can actually probably spread them out a little bit more and just use two packages if you would like to do that. So I like to just lay them down and place them first before I add any type of hot glue. That way I don't have a big mess on my hands. So here I am just figuring out my placement and my pattern. Once I get it all the way I want it, I'm just going to hot glue them all down. I just put a hot glue strip across the middle of the sandal and pressed it firmly onto my prepared wreath form. 
literally the quickest and easiest DIY, but I just think it is so adorable. Such a cute take on the flip-flop wreath I wanted to do for quite some time, but less costly and a little bit smaller. I just love it. Now I did make another bow. This one just has two loops on either side and I attached it to my larger bow just because I wanted a little bit more impact in a kind of a bigger bow and it definitely worked for me. So you could even do it with two different types of ribbon if you wanted to. I hope that you enjoy that. I Hope you enjoyed revisiting all of these DIYs with me. Please let me know down below in the comments what is your favorite. Please remember to subscribe if you haven't and also give me a big thumbs up. Take care friends. I will see you very soon. You can subscribe to my mom's channel. And thank you for watching today's craft and stay safe.